What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve and thanks for hanging out today. So first I need to let you know that Solomon did send the Pulsar Trail and the Pulsar Trail Pro to me to review. I've already done those full reviews. You can see them on my channel. I'll probably link them at some point in the top right corner or at the end of the video. But like I said in those videos and like all my videos, they're not going to influence me. They're not going to tell me what to say. I'm going to give you the honest truth about what I think of the shoes, which I already did. <laughs> but this will be just a comparison video between these two specific shoes, the differences, uh, and maybe which one I like better and give you some uh, my opinions on maybe what you might like better, even though I don't know you, but I don't know, it might help. So to get the comparison started, let's talk about some stats of the shoes. They're both very similar as far as stats are concerned. Both are neutral trail shoes. The Pulsar Trail Pro, you know, it's, you know, a little rigid. The Pulsar Trail is a little more flexible, possibly just a little bit, but this does also have a good bit more miles on them. Let me get that out of the way. Pulsar Trails, I've got roughly 157 miles on them so far. I've used them in a 100 kilometer race, uh, run all over the place with these things. I, I've enjoyed them. Pulsar Trail Pros, uh, about 58 miles on these so far. I use them in a 12 hour races also. So a lot of miles, a lot of time on the feet on the Pulsar Trail Pro. And for the stack height, they're both very similar. The Pulsar Trail Pros, we've got 33 millimeters in the rear, 27 in the front for a six millimeter drop. And the Pulsar Trail, we have 32.6 in the rear and 26.6 in the front for a six millimeter drop. Very, very similar, both six millimeter drops. The outsoles both have three and a half millimeter lugs. We'll get more into that in a little bit. But as you can see, very, very similar. There is one spot though in the stats that they differ pretty greatly. And this is where we'll have our first clear winner. And that's talking about the weight of the shoes. So. Brand new, of course, I threw them on my scales. The Pulsar Trails weighed in at 11 ounces or 312 grams. You know, that's a, it's a, it's a heavier shoe for a men's size 11, not gonna lie. Pulsar Trail Pro weighed in at 9.9 .9 ounces uh, or 282 grams. So we've almost got, uh, it's a good bit of weight. Well, one and a half ounces, it's a good bit lighter and you feel it underfoot for sure. So obviously in that weight category, the win is gonna to go to the Pulsar Trail Pro. And the next category to compare is the fit. How does the shoe fit the foot overall straight out of the box or even after a little break in period? So the Pulsar Trail Pro fits pretty well. There's definitely some areas for improvement. Uh, if you watched my video from the Fort Frenzy 12 hour, you know I had an issue with the medial arch on the Pulsar Trail Pro. I actually had to apply some tape because I was getting a hot spot. It's a little bit more narrow in the medial arch. Toe box wise, fits really well. Plenty comfortable, room for the toes to you know move around just a little bit. It's not crammed, no rubbing. The heel cup, uh, it could be more, a little bit better fit. The lacing system, the way it's all designed, uh, it does give a good lockdown of the heel, but the heel padding in the heel cup uh, could allow for a little bit better fit and just overall, yeah, just a better fit of that foot. So uh, it's it's pretty good. The Pulsar Trail, however, uh, I've said this in many videos that I've done about the Pulsar Trail or just even my running videos, it's probably one of the shoes that I've worn that fits the best ever, just for my foot. It fits really well. So the heel cup of the Pulsar Trail has the endo fit. It just fits the foot really well. The way the heel padding is in there, uh, it just, it grips around that heel. It feels secure. The lacing system locks it down really well. Uh, no hot spots in the medial arch at all. It feels just a little bit wider than the Pulsar Trail Pro. Toe box, again, same kind of width as the, as the Pulsar Trail Pro. It's, it's accommodating. Toes have plenty of room to move around. Just the overall fit of the shoe. I've never once had to tape anything with this. I've never had any hot spots. Even after going through creeks, um, high mountains, whatever, it's just been awesome. So I'm gonna give the win in the fit category to the Pulsar Trail. As always, these are subjective to my foot and your foot might fit a little bit differently. So keep that in mind and take it with a grain of salt, I guess, but hopefully it helps you a little bit. And if it does, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. I would really help that and it helps the channel a lot. And that'd just be, yeah, really cool. And, Neat. Next, we're gonna talk about the comfort, which is very similar to the fit because it plays a big part of the comfort of the shoe. But now we're gonna talk about just, you know, the overall upper, the midsole, the whole comfort experience of the shoe. All right, the Pulsar Trail Pro. It's a pretty comfortable shoe. So the upper, 
is uh, maybe not very plush. Uh, it's more bare bones, stripped down. Think of more of a racing shoe. This is a lighter weight shoe. The upper is comfortable. It's It just breathes really well. My foot never got really hot inside of these. I never got sweaty feet, which was awesome and very rare for me. Uh, but it is a single layer unit on the upper. It's not an individual tongue. It's all one piece. So it does create some overlap in the material, which is a little uncomfortable. Uh, also, I talked about in the review of the video that this point on the heel bumper, I called it, on the outer spot, uh, the outer portion of the shoe here, rubbed my foot just a little bit. It caused a, a little, a little bit of a hot spot that it may have turned into something more serious later on. And also talking about the heel cup, there's really no padding to it in the back, so I did pre-tape my heel there. It wasn't the most comfortable. Uh, it, it definitely could have been more comfortable up top. Midsole is fantastic, super comfortable, plenty of stack height of that Energy Surge midsole. It just protects your foot, gives you a little bit of response while you're running. Uh, the Energy Blade in there contributes to that, is that comfort experience because it helps your foot when it gets a little fatigued, it gives it a little bit more response. So overall, the midsole ride was just really comfortable. And uh, it's just, it's a, it's a pretty comfortable shoe with a couple areas they can definitely improve going forward. Moving over to the Pulsar Trail, however, it's also a very comfortable shoe. We talked about the upper being more plush on this one. It's definitely uh, thicker materials. There is definitely more padding. It's gonna be more comfortable the way it grips the foot. Uh, the upper is also a little bit thicker, so it's not gonna breathe quite as well. I did get some sweaty feet in this shoe. But you know, it actually, uh, they dried at some point, which was also kind of rare for me. So uh, that's a big win for both the shoes. We already talked about the overall fit and how that was very comfortable. The midsole in this, I mean, it's basically identical to the Pulsar Trail Pro, that same Energy Surge midsole, the Energy Blade in there, the TPU fork. It's just, uh, it's a great package. One thing I will notice, uh, hopefully you can see it on the camera and it shows up, but the, the Energy Blade on the uh, Pulsar Trail looks to be uh, a fair amount thicker than the Energy Blade on the Pulsar Trail Pro. Uh, I would almost say, you know, without, I don't have a little instrument to measure that, but I would say that this is about twice the width of the Energy Blade in the Pulsar Trail Pro, which is interesting. It could also be some of that weight reduction. So again, the comfort, I've got to give the win to the Pulsar Trail. It's just been, uh, it's been a workhorse for me and I have loved every mile. Next up is grip. Let's talk about it. Both the shoes have the Contra MA Grip Rubber, which is a really good outsole. It's just a good compound rubber. It's pretty sticky. Uh, it's not as grippy as some shoes out there, but I have been perfectly happy with both of these. Uh, on wet rock, it's definitely adequate. On dry terrain, phenomenal. On muddy terrain, it's even been good. Even with a three and a half millimeter lug. Both of these shoes have a three and a half millimeter lug and it's been really good grip. But there is one shoe that I think is a little bit better. So taking a look at the Pulsar Trail, if we take a look at the lugs, we can see that the front, towards the front of the shoe, the lug slopes forward. The back, it definitely cuts off, it's more jagged, and that's to dig into that ground as you're kind of towing off, maybe going uphill, just provide a little bit better grip. Uh, the lugs in the back are kind of like diamond shaped, and it's the same thing. They slope to the rear, and the jagged spots are kind of towards the middle of the shoe to help dig into that terrain as you're going down really good grip. I've not had an issue. We do see a difference though on the Pulsar Trail Pro. Same, uh, same premise, there is a little bit of slope on the rear of the, of the lugs that goes towards the back of the shoe. The front is more, uh, more aggressive, but we see a little bit of a, a hook pattern in the midsole portion of the forefoot of the, of the front of the shoe. The lugs are more aggressive. There's not as much of a slope in the front. It's just, it's a more aggressive lug. And I do feel that these did provide just a hair better grip. And I'm talking a minuscule amount probably, but it was a little bit better. So in the grip category, I've got to give the win to the Pulsar Trail Pro. But with that said, both shoes are really, really good. And especially for a three and a half millimeter lug, I was a little concerned. You know, I've, I've run in some five millimeter lugs, six millimeter lugs, and uh, in some pretty gnarly terrain. And these three and a half millimeters did awesome and I was really surprised with both. And now for the durability of the shoes, which one might go a little bit longer? Uh, well, obviously the Pulsar Trails, like I said, I have 157 miles. So I've got about 100 miles more on these than I do on the Pulsar Trail Pro. Looking at the shoe, I can definitely see there is some wear around the upper of the shoe. There's a little bit of uh, material coming apart, some scratches, uh, a little bit of compression to the, to the midsole, not a lot. The upper itself, there's no holes, no tears. Uh, it's wearing pretty well. Where I'm seeing the most wear is the outsole. These here have been run mainly on uh, rocky technical terrain, 
uh, you know, general single track trails with very, very minimal pavement, like probably a grand total of maybe two miles of pavement of that 157. Maybe that's a little, maybe more like three or four miles tops. But I can definitely see some wear to the rubber on the heel of, you know, that's where my foot strikes of the outsole of the Pulsar Trail. The front as well is wearing a little bit. So these lugs, you know, I don't think they're gonna last more than maybe 350, 400 miles tops. Uh, that's gonna be, that's gonna be pushing it probably. With the Pulsar Trail Pros, I've only got about 58 miles on these. As far as the lugs are concerned, they look really good. I've only done the one race in them, which was uh, on single track, but there was a little bit that we had to go on pavement to get into the kind of the, the aid station area. And it was, uh, you know, really short. So again, probably maybe a mile tops over that whole race of having pavement. And these look really good. I don't really see a lot of wear, a little bit of abrasion starting to happen on the rear here. But again, that's how my foot strikes. So uh, I think these are probably gonna wear about the same as the Pulsar Trail because it's the same outsole compound, the Contra Grip MA. But when we talk about the upper, I think there is gonna be a difference here. I think this upper, uh, the way it's, uh, it just feels more durable. It feels like I said, like a ripstop fabric. And I think it's gonna last a little bit longer. It's just my opinion. I think it's gonna last a little longer than the upper on the Pulsar Trail. Midsole wise, it's probably gonna be the same. It's the same midsole. So with that in mind, I'm probably gonna have to give the victory in the durability category to the Pulsar Trail Pro. And now to round out the comparison, there's really one thing left to talk about, and that is the price where there is a clear winner. So Pulsar Trail Pro retails for $160, uh, you know, decent price. Pulsar Trail retails for $130. That's a fantastic price. <laughs> Obviously, $30 less, the win goes to the Pulsar Trail. Uh, I would pay $130 for this shoe all day long. I've said it before, I love this shoe. So if it were me and I was choosing which shoe do I want for daily miles, logging long adventure runs in the mountains, or just, you know, 50, 60 miles a week, whatever it may be, I'm gonna pick the Pulsar Trail. It's just a tried and true workhorse for me, super comfortable, fits my foot just amazingly, the best of any shoe I've had, all probably. It's just, it's awesome. Love this shoe. If I want a shoe that I'm going to go race a 50K in, uh, something that's, you know, going to provide good grip, breathe well, uh, be pretty light, I'm probably going to want to go with the Solomon Pulsar Trail Pro. It's just, it's a little bit lighter and you can feel that underfoot. We're talking one and a half ounces, you know, it's, you can feel that and it breathes well. It's just, it's a good shoe. So I'd probably pick this one right here. But when we start going further, let's get to that 50 mile, which I just did, you know, almost 100K in these. But if you get to that 100K distance, definitely the 100 mile distance, I would want to pick the Pulsar Trail. It's just, it has a little bit more overall comfort of the whole shoe, the upper, everything just seems to be a little bit more comfortable and fits my foot and me a little bit better. So for that, I would pick this as well. So I hope that this little comparison has been helpful, maybe giving you some insight into which shoe might be better for you. Remember, each foot is different, so you might have a totally different experience. If you do, let us know below in the comments. That will help everyone out there looking to decide, you know, which shoe should I get? It'll help them. So please let us know below. Also, I would just, you know, I'm gonna throw it out there. I think the Pulsar Trail is my favorite shoe of 2022. It's just been amazing. Well, that is gonna do it for the comparison. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't watched already, you wanna take a look at a 100 kilometer race I did wearing the Pulsar Trail, which I would just absolutely love the shoe, love this race, the Beaverhead 100K right here on your screen. Take a look at that absolutely just gorgeous scenery highly recommend the race and then over on this side of the screen i'll put a playlist of the shoe reviews you can go check out the full reviews of both of these or other shoes too so thank you for watching i do appreciate you all and i will see you on the next one